All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I wanna cover where can you work as a network engineer and what industries do network engineers even exist in? So a lot of people have a lot of confusion with this and they don't understand where do these network engineers even work? Do they work at a hospital? Do, do they work for an ISP? Well, I'm gonna just show you every example of where a network engineer would work. The first example and the example that I've worked at is at an ISP, also known as an internet service provider. So an internet service provider, as you know, it's like Comcast, Spectrum, AT&T, T-Mobile, all those companies, uh, CenturyLink, all these companies that provide internet, home internet specifically to you as in customer and also businesses as well. So let's say your home internet, you have your home router, that company that is known as an ISP will, is the one that supplies you with that. And what they have is they have access to a very valuable resource, which is they have access to the, to the fiber optical lines that lead to the internet. And really the ISP is really what is the gatekeeper towards the internet because they have the lines that connect with other ISPs throughout the world. And they need multiple network engineers to do lots of routing. So an ISP would really focus on layer three routing and you have to be really 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 good at ospf and bgp as well as isis when it comes to working at an isp environment you know i've worked at an isp and it is a fun environment to work in i've worked in teams where there's over 200 network engineers in just part of our pool right and you know they're sub they would usually subdivide teams from the core network to the backbone to wherever uh the access layer different types of teams right and as you know um these isps have tons of routers and all these routers are all over the world or sorry all over the u.s usually uh, depending on where, what country you're in obviously it depends on the country but there's definitely routers all over and obviously you have to make sure the packets are being sent and you have redundancy and all that stuff that's involved there. So that's the environment there. So the next environment uh, that a network engineer is needed is at a bank or some sort of trading firm. So a lot of trading firms, if you guys don't know, when it comes to something known as high frequency trading, so that basically means trading stocks or futures or any sort of asset class that requires a very quick trades. And I don't want to go too deep into the weeds of this, but basically the way it works is you imagine you're trying to buy a stock, but these sort of high frequency trading firms, they're, they're buying stocks extremely quickly quick and they sell, they're selling it quick to liquidate basically they're they're market makers and they liquidate the assets and all that stuff but the whole idea with that is you need a network engineer to maintain that trading firm and to give them a slight edge actually. So working at a trading firm, the, a huge edge you can have is having a fiber optical cable directly to the trading system. I don't know how the trade is meant. I don't know if it goes to New York Stock Exchange or something like that, but having usually uh, these trading firms have a lot of money to invest in direct fiber optical cables directly to whoever makes the trades or directly to the office where it's made. And that is a huge advantage to have because that's going to give you the fastest amount of internet when you have a direct line communication right instead of going through an ISP and is a unique place to work at as a network engineer usually these types of jobs are really hard to get because you know, it, you know, there just isn't many of these particular ones, but it is a really cool one to work at. They do pay a lot of money, as you know, because you're, you're, you're in the field of making them more money. And uh, it's a cool field to work in. I mean, the trading firms, I've interviewed a couple that had students interview at them as well. And it's a, it's a cool position to work at. It, you're pretty much working with businessmen and, and trading people. So pretty interesting field. It's, it's the most unique one you can probably get as a network engineer. All right. So the next area is in hospitals. So as a network engineer, you know, we work in multiple different areas. And one of the areas you can work at is in hospital because remember when you're working at a hospital communication is one of the biggest things that are involved when it comes to a hospital like if a nurse is trying to get a hold of a doctor or a doctor is trying to get a hold of a nurse or a patient is trying to get a hold of the doctor for an emergency the last thing you want is where there's some sort of communication mismatch and uh, you know there's tons of server rooms hospitals are usually big environments and there's tons of telephones and you know the the front desk needs to be able to communicate with someone in the room to make sure you know they have that direct line of communication so usually this is more of a local area network type of topology because it's only within the hospital so there's definitely going to be a lot of layer three switches and switches just in general and tons of end devices from laptops to phones to uh to computers and servers as well so it's a uh, and obviously you also have you know your private network networks for the hospital as like guest networks. And obviously you have the private network for the doctors and nurses to be able to connect into their systems. And, you know, obviously, you know, there's a lot of HIP in there. So you want to make sure it's very secure and not let anyone be able to tamper with the evidence or tamper with the information. So that has to be really, really secure. So I'm pretty sure there's tons of port security in terms of there's a bunch of security that's just involved in that sort of realm. So that's kind of where you can find a position in a hospital. So that's the third one. And also let's go into number four. Number four is going to be in a hotel or some sort of 
hospitality environment. So hotels have tons and tons and tons of guests and guests want Wi-Fi. I don't know if you guys have ever gone to a hotel uh, and the first thing you look for is what's the Wi-Fi password? What's the Wi-Fi password? Well, the Wi-Fi password has to be part of a guest network. I mean, our, uh, well, there's a guest network and then there's obviously a network for customers. And uh, the way it works is obviously you, you connect into their to their network and then you have to put in your, your last name and then your, probably your room number and then that's going to be able to connect you into the Wi-Fi. And that's usually, that should usually automatically set up as soon as you check into the hotel, which is pretty awesome to do. But uh, but yeah, usually you get Wi-Fi and obviously the Wi-Fi is always the slowest at hotels because I mean, it's being shared with tons of guests. And if you're trying to use the network at 7 p.m., it's definitely going to be much slower than using it at 5 a.m. or 3 a.m. But a hospital is a really good environment because it's also a local area network. Uh, but this particular network is going to involve tons of what are known as access points. So you're going to see a bunch of access points everywhere because the last thing you want is a guest to have really slow Wi-Fi and say, hey, the Wi-Fi sucks because if the Wi-Fi is really bad at a hotel, imagine the horrible reviews they will get. Like imagine if there's no Wi-Fi and you have a meeting to do in the hotel. That's an absolute disaster. So that's why it's really important to have really good Wi-Fi when it comes to at a hotel and really have it be not even not just fast, but just have it be reliable and working. The last thing you want to do is cause an outage for a customer and you get a horrible review. So that's that's one area is at a hotel and that's where you can you know be a network engineer in that particular position. All right, so going into number five, it is a data center. So Amazon, AWS, uh, GCP, um, you know, Microsoft, all these big, big, big cloud platforms are hosted in what are known as data centers and data centers need network engineers. Data centers are basically a collection of servers and, and switches and maybe even some routers to provide high speed layer two delivery and connectivity throughout these servers in, in this sort of environment. And in a data center environment, there's different ways of doing it. There's a you know, north, south, north and south traffic and as well as east to west traffic. So within the data center, there's tons and tons and tons of, like I said, these different types of servers. Um, and for them to all to be able to communicate with each other in a fast manner, you're going to have to have switches and routers. Um, obviously, the router is going to be more upstream to go in, out to the internet, but then obviously to communicate, I mean, you know, east to west within the, within the data center, obviously you're going to have those multiple servers everywhere for them to be able to communicate with each other. And as a network engineer, you're going to have to configure that. Usually you can use BGP, you can use different protocols like VXLAN, um, a lot of spanning tree, a lot of just local area network stuff that has to be involved in data centers. So it is a really cool environment to work in. And you know, that's, that's somewhere where you can work as a network engineer is at a data center. So that's going to be number five. All right, so going into number six, now let's talk about the satellites. So satellites are pretty cool. If you guys don't know, uh, there's a company called Starlink. Starlink is basically a company that has tons of satellites in the sky. And basically these satellites are obviously orbiting the earth. The way it works is you buy this little device, this little, um, you probably see a picture here, but you buy this little device and you connect it and it will automatically connect into the server. So it is a really cool uh, kind of device to work with because if you're in a remote area or an area where you just can't get any internet access, you can get pretty fast high speed internet. And the way Starlink works is the, the way their satellites work, they orbit a little bit lower where they orbit closer to Earth's orbit, which is pretty awesome because that would bring faster connectivity as opposed to regular satellites that sit a little bit higher in, in Earth's atmosphere. So it's kind of a different way of, of doing it with Starlink, but it's a really cool way because it provides internet access to remote areas. So imagine you're in the middle of nowhere and you, you can't even get 4G and you can connect and have you know 100 megabits up and down. And the cool thing is now Starlink is starting to move to airlines as well. So I think it's like um, Emirates or Qatar Airways are potentially um, getting a Starlink, which is pretty awesome. So that's one area that that you guys can work in. Um, I, I'm not having really have an experience with this, but I do believe if you are going to work in the satellite realm, there is I think there's a, a routing protocol that connects different satellites together. I think it's I forgot the name of the routing protocol. I learned it a long time ago, but that's maybe an area that you guys can look at potentially it's his satellites. And that's an area that I'm looking to get at. Um, I did interview at another company called uh, go go wi-fi which kind of does use satellites if you guys have ever used internet on a plane it does use satellites to be able to communicate and go go wi-fi or go go something is, is one of the areas that you can work at as a network engineer so it's a really cool area and that's the area maybe i want to get into next is getting into satellites because i'm really big on space and, and, and air travel so uh you know anything to make 
you know, internet faster on a plane is, is awesome because internet right now on planes kind of suck. And if we can get Starlink on planes, that'd be pretty awesome. So that's one area you can work in as a network engineer. All right. So the last area you can work is, and like I said, it's not the last one. There's multiple areas, but the, the last big one is usually at a government. So working at a government, you have usually have their own private network, and this can be at a military base. This can be at some other government uh, building but you definitely need network engineers, especially in a military base where it's super secure and you're definitely going to need a security clearance for this, unfortunately. And that means that you will have, you know, maybe a top secret clearance because you are, you're the one who are, who's maintaining communication with generals who are communicating with other generals in different geographic locations. And that communication needs to be sealed tight that no one and no other person, even within the, the, the base can't be see it. So this can be a military bases. This can be, you know, bases overseas, air force. This can be in some Marines. This can be anywhere. And, you know, in naval ships, this is kind of a big area um, within networking is working, you know, within the government realm. So if you guys are looking to maybe break into the, the government realm, you will need a security clearance for it. It is a little bit tough to get, but if you're in the Washington DC area, maybe even San Antonio area where there's a lot of um, government contracts, you may be able to land a position there um, and have, maybe have to go through a polygraph or I don't even know what the process is when it comes to getting a top secret clearance, but that's kind of what it is. And that's another area you can work as a network engineer. But needless to say, those are the main areas you can work as a network engineer. My two areas that I've worked at is, you know, telecommunications, which is, you know, at an ISP as well as a data center. So I'm curious to see if any of you guys have worked at other industries, you know, I've the students that I've helped land jobs have worked in multiple different areas from hospitals to, 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 to hotels, to security places, to cloud environments, to, to anywhere. Like there's so many different areas and it's, that's a unique part of, of network engineering is network engineers are needed everywhere. It doesn't matter what field you get into it. You're going to need a network engineer no matter where you go. And that's a good thing because that means there's tons of jobs and you can work in really unique environments. Here's the thing, like a lot of times people get quote unquote burnt out. The good, the good news is if you get burnt out from your career, your field, you can just pivot to a different area that requires network engineering. Maybe it's at a, you know, you can start working at hotels or you can start working at a cruise ship. There's so many areas. And that's the cool thing about networking is it offers so much opportunity for individuals because it, there's so much places you can work at, right? So go ahead and put in the comment section below where you guys work at as a network engineer. I'm really curious to see what type, what type of areas they are. But, uh, but yeah, I really do appreciate you guys' time. And by the way, if you guys are looking to become a network engineer in under six months, go ahead and click the link in the description will be the first link down below. And that's going to show you a video of me explaining how you can become a network engineer in six months. And I'll, you can go ahead and see if this is the right fit for what you got going on. And I'd love to see if I, I can help you become a network engineer. So go ahead and do that. Um, but I really do appreciate you guys' time. So if you guys liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you guys want to subscribe, click the subscribe button somewhere. And uh, thank you guys so much for your time. And I hope you guys have a good rest of your day, evening, night, wherever you guys are. And peace.